All right. So a few quick announcements. Torch, where are you? Come here. Pastor Torch and Nails are here from Butte. So give a quick, quick, quick shot. Quick shot. Wow. What to say? It, it, you know, every, every time I'm prepared, you, you never call me. <laughs> when I'm not, of course. Uh, you know, you know, uh, Jesus is alive and well in you. Um, no matter what, uh, you know, our church goes up and down, like like all of them. But we're always seeing them at work. We're seeing people saved. We're seeing, we just did a baptism Saturday, you know, just another one. It, it, it's good. It's good. Um, we, our recovery program's growing, and uh, it's good things. I've been up here th this third weekend in a row, so good stuff. So that's pretty much what's going on in Butte. We're maintaining. <laughs> and so I'm going to also throw him under the bus on this. Have you noticed anything different about this guy? Like about 100 right 100 pounds down 120 pounds down so it's awesome it's awesome randy where's randy come on dude thank I you sir all right set free hardens in the house you should have known <laughs> how y'all doing just just glad to, glad to come up here every time I come up and see you folks. It just fills my heart with joy to see this, this church filled with Jesus-loving people. And it keeps me inspired and keeps me trucking. You know, like, like Torch said, you know, when you're in ministry work, ups and downs, and you just got to fight through the downs and, and work through to the ups. So we're, we're doing recovery in, uh, in Harden as well. And, you know, church every Sunday, we just keep trucking and, and spreading Jesus. And that's how you get it done. Just keep trucking for Jesus. <laughs> Right on, right on. And as they keep talking about recovery, not Labor Day weekend, the Monday after Labor Day, we are starting Set Free Recovery here. So it'll be on Monday nights after anger management, so all you angry people can come to anger management first. And then right after, all you addicted people might as well just move right in next door and away you go. Well, nobody got excited about that. What up? Is there any angry people in here? And almost all, well, I'm pretty much got gotcha. you. I was going to call the rest of you, you know, liars, but you never know. Anybody addicted in here? Now, if you don't all raise your hand, we're all addicted to something. We should be addicted to? Jesus. There you go. And that's a good way to get, jump in this program. And uh, it'll start working your way through stuff, and it's all biblically based Jesus stuff and it'll help you get through and I tell you what how many have ever tried to quit booze dope women men all that whatever your thing was by yourself and it didn't work the only way you're going to get is you got to have the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit working with you and through you to push your way through that's the only way it's going to work so in a couple weeks that'll get going we'll let you know more about that uh, we also have we're going to have a new small group for all the youngsters. I'm looking at Maxine and Rainey. It is going to be for the older generation. And that's going to be starting in a couple weeks also. We'll get you more information about that too. You're going to be, I think, didn't you say we're going to start going through the book of John and that? We're going to be at Maxine's house or Rainey's house and getting going on that. So, those of you that are in the prime of your life will be able to come hang out on Wednesday nights. Right on? Uh, we just had a poker run today. Got to hang out, bless a bunch of bikes, got to pray with some people. Can I tell you a crazy story and then I'm going to get out of here? We carry these poker chips around. I don't have one with me right now. You got one in your pocket? And one of the brothers was from Idaho today. And uh, 
I just walked up and I said, hey, and I'm going to give you this too as we're here. I said, here, I would love for you to have this. And he takes it and he looks at it and he goes, I've been blessed. And he teared up. And uh, he goes, man, bro, you don't know how much I needed this today. His niece had just been kidnapped yesterday. And he said, we have been praying and you come and drop this into my hand today. And the cool thing about it is we're all standing around there and I, and I said, can I pray with you, dude? Absolutely. <laughs> so I got to sit there and pray with him. That's what it's all about. Is just make, it's relational stuff. You're going to love this crazy fool here. I'm telling you. He is going, him and his whole family have been killing it with the kids all week. And you're going to get a small taste, maybe a bigger taste, but you never know, about what's going on with all this stuff and these guys. So we're going to have some fun around here tonight. And Cowboy, you are on. All right. Please join me in our set free pledge. And we do have some new folks. I know the kids want to rock this with us. So how do we do this here? Loud and proud. Amen. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I won't look back or let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sidewalking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, praised, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith, walk by patience. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions are few. My guide is reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. I will not give up, shut up, let up till I've stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I draw, preach to all I know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes, my banner will be clear. Amen. <clears throat> Our guide is reliable. Our mission is clear. Amen. So today, one of the texts I got, 2 Timothy 4, it was 1 through 4, but the thing that, as I continued reading on, the thing that rocked me was verse 5, but you be sober in all things and during hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. It's go out, shake the tree for Jesus, Amen. So you bow your heads with me. We're going to bring in tonight's offering. Father God, Lord, we truly thank you. We thank you for this ministry we call Set Free. Father God, tonight as we, uh, I don't even want to say begin worship. I hope we're going to call this Lord tonight that we're continuing to worship. That we just recognize that you are alive, working in us. Father God, may it always be about you. So Father God, we're going to give you tonight our first fruits. Knowing and understanding the love, the joy, and all that you have done for us. So Father God, we love you so much. And we're going to pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. Alive! Lift it up with us! I was lost with a broken heart. You picked me up, now I'm set apart. From the ash I was born again. Forever safe in the Savior's hands. You are more than my words could say. I'll follow you, Lord, all my days. Fix my eyes, follow in your ways. For 
forever free in unending grace. Come on now. You are, you are, you are for my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love, never ending. Oh, oh, oh. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us free. your hands together come on on the midst of the darkest night and let your love be the shining light breaking chains that were holding me you sent your sun down and set me free everything of this world can be i'm pressing on till i see your face and i will live that you will be done I won't stop till your kingdom comes. Let me hear you say, oh, you are, you are, you are my freedom. We lift you higher, lift you higher. Your love, your love, your love never ending. Oh, oh, oh. You are alive in us. Nothing can take your place. You are all we need. Your love has set us. You are alive. him tonight all right and big kids God says be like a child how much do you love Jesus big kids come on like this good Woo, I love you Jesus amen God's not dead he is alive come on we know this one we're gonna shout it out tonight God's not dead he is moving big time let love explode and bring the dead to life. A love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. A love so bold to see a revolution somehow.
surely alive. So we showed up at practice, and here our drummer has a lion. It's a good visual. Stand up and show them the Lion of Judah. And he's fighting on our behalf, and we have a good partner on our side, fighting for us to serve him to the end. No matter what comes your way, to stay strong and faithful to the end. That's what he's asking. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No matter what comes, I lost a little friend this last two weeks, two weeks ago. Taught her piano. Next thing you know, she's with Jesus. Seven-year-old girl by accident. An accident. God's in control of all. But here we, we got to know good or bad. We serve Jesus. Amen. Worship him in the fire and out of the fire. All right? Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful with the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. The walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name.
Father, we just praise you and we glorify your name. Blessed be your name. Father, in all things, all circumstances, you are the Lord of Lord. You are Lord of the circumstance, Father God. You are above, behind, and all around. Lord, you surround us with your love and your goodness and your mercy, Father God. You are waiting for us with arms outstretched, waiting to wrap your arms around us. Lord, as we call out to you, Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the honor, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you, Father God, are in the midst of our hearts and in our lives, Lord. You are in everything. Lord, we give you this night, Father God. Be glorified in this place. May you be lifted up in everything that's said and done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right on. Isn't God amazing? I can't get that word out of my mouth tonight. Isn't God amazing? All right, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what. He, if you don't answer him back tonight, gonna you're going to be in trouble because he's coming after you. <laughs> you know what? We're going to have fun in church tonight. Is everybody ready to have some fun? Yeah! I kind of did it. <laughs> Holy bucket. All right, good evening. Good evening. Okay, let's start now getting riled up, okay? Good evening! There we go. All right, so about six or eight months ago, as a children's pastor, we're always looking for, especially the crew we minister to, new and cool music. And when you're in ministry, it's really hard to find good Bible-based songs. So I was on Facebook, and I was going through some of my children's pastor sites, and this comes across my page. And I'm like, whoa, he'd fit in at Set Free. So I start doing some looking and jumpstart three. What the heck is that? So I start reading some comments that people are saying. Someone had asked, what's some good Christian music for my children's church? So I started reading some of the comments and Jeff came in himself and said, I'm a musicianary. I'm a musician and a missionary. And I travel the world teaching kids the Bible through music. And he's going to tell you, I'm sure, part of his testimony of how he started. And I thought, yeah, you know what? They all say that. So let me do some listening to see if it's true. So I go on YouTube, and I listen to a couple songs. I'm like, hey, this guy got a good beat. And my kids know the beat that we need here to get people riled up and get the kids looking. So I played it for my kids, and they're like, hey, I like this. And then they saw there's dance moves. And you know my girls. They're like, oh, we're going to do this, Mom. So I thought, let's test it out. And we did it for one Saturday, and the kids fell in love. And these kids are coming in, as you know, a lot of our kids off the streets, and they're learning Bible verses by singing these songs. So they're going home, and they're singing the Word of God to their unsaved families. Mm. So what this man and his family do are amazing. So I'm looking at this, and I'm starting to fall in love with some of this stuff. So I thought, I'm going to pray. God, I just, God just really put on my heart, let's bring him up here. And I thought, well, we don't normally do those kinds of things, you know. I don't know if JT's going to let me do that. So I kept praying about it, and I contacted Jeff. And after I got to talking to him, his kids are homeschooled also. They have a lot of the same core values and the things that my family and I have. And it really, God just connected us in a way to where it feels like we've known you forever, totally. and it's been just a couple days. And they've, totally. our, our sons have overtaken the living room with Legos to where we can't even work with, walk without injuring ourselves. It's just family. And he's here to minister in his family's heart. They're it's so pure, and it's all about reaching you and the kids for Jesus. And something to know, he may be mis ministering to kids, but he's ministering to you. How many of you have a hard time memorizing Bible verses? How many of you have a hard time remembering where something is, and maybe you go to witness somebody, and you're like, uh, somewhere in the Bible it says this, right? This helps. It's amazing. I have a very hard time memorizing, and it's really helped. So he will minister to all of you. So I expect every single person, old or young, to participate and have fun. Yeah? Are you all excited for tonight? It is my honor and pleasure to introduce you to Jeff from Jumpstart 3 and his family. Awesome. All right, all right, all right. How are you guys doing tonight? How are you guys doing tonight? All right. So I'm going to ask something. Okay. That's fantastic. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to ask everybody to stand up, please. That's right. If you're physically able, I want you to get on your feet right now. I want you to show me your hands. And we're just going to make a little pledge of our own. All right? So we're going to wave our hands. Good. Now say it with me. Say, I'm going to wave my hands. And I'm going to stomp my feet. But I'm not going to ring the bell. 
Because modest is hottest. Okay, this is for Jesus tonight, so, you know, we're just going to keep this part steady. But we're going to be using some hand motions. Everyone say hand motions. Okay, a lot of people get freaked out about dancing in church. You guys are about the least freaked out church I've ever been in. You guys are awesome. I love you guys already. This is great. But some people get a little bit self-conscious about using their bodies to worship the Lord. You know what I'm talking about? Am I talking to the right people? Okay. So here's what I'm going to ask. Tonight, you're not performing for me to see, or your neighbor, or the person behind you. We're going to worship God tonight. Is that okay? Okay. Now in my Bible, it says, every knee shall bow. That means every. Raise your hand if you're part of every. That's, that's you. That's you. That's you. That's you. It's her. It's me. Every, that means God wants us to worship him with our whole what? Our bodies. Okay. Now, some people, I think, really believe that when we get to heaven, it says, every knee shall bow unless you're shy and you're not good at bowing, and then we should just get someone who's really good at bowing and put them on a stage, and they'll bow, and we'll just watch. But that's not how it's going to be in heaven, amen? There's only going to be one audience member in heaven. He's going to be sitting on his throne, and his name is the Lord. And he deserves praise tonight. So rather than waiting till we get to heaven and be surprised that there's no, like, where's my seat? Where's my seat? I'm going to be walking around in heaven looking for my, my place to sit down. Mm-mm. The only thing you're going to be doing in heaven is worshiping your God. Amen? He asks you to use your voice. He says, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is what? Lord. Lord. So I want you to use your tongues and sing tonight. I don't care if it sounds good like her. You have an incredible voice. Oh, my gosh. Does she have an incredible voice? I heard it earlier. I'm like, what CD are they playing? And I came out there. I'm like, that is your band. They're getting, they getting down in there. But some of us, I will tell you, we have the voice of a dancer, don't we? I've been told that. I have a face for radio, okay? But, but it's not about that. It's not about how good you sound to your neighbor. It's about God does not make mistakes. And he made you. And he wants you to use what he gave you tonight. Can you do it? Okay. So, <clears throat> I've been praying a lot about what I was going to say to you guys. And I want to get a little bit serious tonight. Is that okay? Now, I do kids ministry. Everyone say kids. Kids. Yeah. Last I checked, you all have a mom and a dad at some point in your life, yes? yes. Okay, you weren't just popped out of a test tube somewhere. To... No. We all are kids, amen? Okay, so I'm going to treat this as kids' church for kids of all ages. Is that cool? Okay, so I'm going to expect of you what I expect of my kids. I'm going to ask you to simply listen. Everyone look at your neighbor and say, listen. To the Lord. And do... To what he says. What it says. Okay, so take your hands up. We're going to get warmed up. This is James 122. Everyone say James! Yeah. One! Yeah. Dot, dot! Dot, dot! 22. Okay, you know what? I need some volunteers. Young lady in the pink, could you come up here? Yeah, I need, I need some helpers. Okay, and uh, let's see. We need one of the person. You, sir, could you help me out with the, with the fine hat on? Yes. I know. He thought, he said, you know what? I'm going to wear camouflage so no one sees me today, but he's up front now. Okay, you guys here. You stand over here. Here's the way it works. Okay, we're going to say, hi-ya! Hi That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You okay? He's like, <laughs> what's just happened? Let's try to get say, hi-ya! Hi Archer, I need you to stand up. Calling you by name. Oh, oh, they're all standing up. Here we go. One more time. As loud as you can. Hi-ya! That's good. Now replace that. Say, do not, do not. Merely, listen. merely listen. Where's your hands at, boss? Come, there we go. There we go. To the word. And so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do what it says. You got it. This is not hard. This is James 122. I promise, if this is the only Bible verse that you can memorize, and you apply this to your life, your life will look different. If we don't just look at the Bible and go, oh, that's really nice, yeah, all right, past, good sermon. All right, now what was I doing? I was going back to just how I was. You know you can deceive yourselves, can't you? Y'all are good at it, huh? I know I am. I'm a professional. I'm a professional. I've made a living doing it, deceiving myself, telling me, you know what? No one's ever going to find out about this. 
I could just get away with this one right here. Everyone say, do not, do not. merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do whatever you want. Do whatever feels good. But hold on a second. Isn't that what we've done, though? For real, for real. Okay. You know what? I got to tell you something. I go to churches, and they have a little room where they have, like, a recovery ministry. And it bothers me. Because you said it so clearly. Every single one of us is addicted to something. Every, I love coming into churches where everyone's actually just honest. And no one's putting on. There's not like, oh, here's the church people. And then those people are over here. Those people are over here. Because I believe those people are the only honest people in some churches. Amen? Okay, we're going to be honest today. Say, do not, do not. merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourself. Do what it Do what it Do what it Okay, now throw your hands up. <laughs> nice. Woo! <laughs> Everyone say, whoa. Okay, now we're going to roll the song. You keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. There they are. Armpit check. Okay, good. I want to see them all. Okay, now, DJ, let's sing James 122. Just sing as I sing and do as I do. Here we go. Crank it up. Come on, cowboy. Some music. Cowboy. Cowboy. All right. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Can we have the music up, guys? Music, please. Do not merely listen to the word. That's awesome. Crank it. And so deceive yourself. Now you know it. Sing it. Do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourself. A little more music. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do what it says. All right. One more time. It's loud. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do what it says. All right, take it from the top. Now you know it. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. What are you going to do, church? Do what it says. Do what it says. Do what it says. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do what it says. All right. This is where we bounce. Go! Come on, man. Just some hands. Give me some hands. All right. All right. Okay. Let's go. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. What are you going to do? Do what it says. Do what it says. Do what it says. You guys, look at your neighbor and tell him like you lost your mind. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do what it says. Now throw your hands up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Give the Lord a hand clap. Woo. All right, thank you, volunteers. You guys can have a seat. Church, you can have a seat for just a moment. Now. Listen, y'all stand up, eh? You good? We'll go hand. You don't know where the bathroom is? She'll show you. Hallelujah. It's got to make room for more Holy Spirit. <laughs> Sometimes we got to go, amen? Now, we're going to fill in the blank, church. If I say, do not merely to the word. And so, do what it, do what it, do what it says. But should we do what it says like someday? No. Should we do what it says pretty much? No. Like, I mean, we could, like, as long as we get most of it in there, it's probably going to be all right, but we can kind of mix it with whatever we believe, right? We should do what the Bible says. If it says love your neighbor, 
If it says, ready, forgive. Should we forgive? That's a tough one. A friend of mine told me, I was over in Germany preaching earlier this year. And I, I went to a class, and this young lady, she stood up, she said, the greatest bondage that she's ever had in her life, it wasn't drugs or alcohol, it wasn't poverty, it was unforgiveness. It was unforgiveness. It bound her up, and it controlled everything about her life. She had trouble when she read Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust. Church, I want you to reach up your hand. Say, trust. Trust, trust. Trust, trust. In yourself. What? You're all very argumentative, aren't you? Okay. What, what did she say? You know the truth. Yeah. Yeah, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, right? Church, stand up with me. Say trust. Trust, trust. Trust, trust. In the Lord. With all. All, all. All, all. Of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he... He, 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 he will make your path straight. Amen? Now, when I came into your church, I saw something awesome. Right in that foyer there, you have a suit of armor. Have you guys all seen that suit of armor over there? This is cool because I have to, I use this example. Melina, can you do me a favor? Do you know what I'm asking for? Yeah, you're, you're going to put that on. Now, I don't have a suit of armor because, well, they're heavy, and we go around on airplanes, so we have to improvise. Is it back there? Did someone put it away? Do you know what we're looking for, Gina? Okay. She stole it. <laughs> I'll tell you, you guys, who was in the military in this room? You, sir. Could you come forward? What is, what is your name? Bernard. What branch did you serve in? Army. Army. Can we thank him for his service, you guys? Come stand right here, Bernard. My dad was Army. Thank you for what you do. Can you do me a favor? Can you show me a salute? It's fantastic. Look, he tightened right up. That doesn't go away, that training. Now, can you hold that for a minute? Yes. Now, here's the deal. Do you know where the salute came from? Church, when, when the man wore a suit of armor, you could not tell who he was because he had a mask over his face. He had a shield so he wouldn't get hit with a sword or a spear or whatever they were chucking at you. Now here's the story. When you would come into the presence of your Lord, your King. Everyone say Lord. When I say Jesus is Lord, he's no different than the King. He was the person in charge of you. He's your boss, right? Okay, now here's the story. When you would come into the presence of the King, you could not come in with your face shield down. Because the king wouldn't know if you were friend or foe. He wouldn't know if you were coming to kill him. He wanted to see your true identity. So he would ask that you would lift, everyone with me, lift that shield. Everyone say church face. We all have it, right? You just had the worst day. You come into church. How you doing? Oh, great. Yeah. I'm cool. Liar. But when you come before God, do you know? Are you okay? Is that arm? It's not falling off yet. Okay, good. I always forget to check. He's like, oh, oh. He is still saluting. He is revealing himself and submitting himself to the person above him. This is true submission. He's saying, this is really me. How can I serve you? Amen? When you come before God, he doesn't ask you to be perfect. He chooses to use you. That is an honor. Just like it was an honor for him to serve in the army. Now he stands here showing honor to the person who is in charge of him. So would you guys all just put a salute up? Okay. So I want you today, I'm going to challenge you to not put your church face on in the rest of this service. I want you to get real with me and get honest with me. And more importantly, with who? Yeah. Okay. So, say trust. trust. You can break your salute. Eddie's. 
Okay, say trust. Trust, trust. Trust, trust. In the Lord. Did we get a couple of kids up here to help me? Yes, you. You and um, with you. What is your name again? You look like him, but your hair is all different. Come on up here. You guys, take a look at this young man. Woo! He just got his hair done right. Now, yeah, she's like, ow! Okay. When I called on the phone and talked to his mom, he's like, I want a mohawk, mom! And then I came up here and said, I can give you mohawk. Oh, um, let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to talk next about why we wear this, but church, let's trust. Say trust. Trust, trust. Trust, trust. In the Lord. With all, 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 all of your heart. And then go home and worry all night. Am I talking to the right people? Come on. With all, 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 all of your heart. As long as everyone's looking. Make sure you look good. Like you got all, all praise the Lord. I just trust you for everything. You go, oh no, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? How am I going to fix this? I'm the only one that does that, right? Trust. Trust, trust. Right now there's, there's towns in Texas that are flooded. There's people that are standing on their roofs, just like there have been in every storm. And they're waiting for them to drop a rope from that helicopter so they can grab it. Now here's the deal. There's some people that might not think that rope can hold. Say trust. trust. Will God ever let you down? No. He'll never let you down. People have already let you down, haven't they? Have you ever let yourself down? I could preach all night on that. Say trust. Trust, trust. Trust, trust. In the Lord. With all, 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 all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he, E, 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 will make your path straight. So you can have a seat. These kids got to have some room to run. All right. That was fantastic. Church, are you ready to sing with me? Now, I tell you something. No place in the Bible does it say that we're supposed to hide God's word in our phone. But this is where it stays a lot of times. Amen? How many of you guys brought a paper Bible with you? Show it to me. Just, it's in my office. Sorry, Pastor. Not trying to bust your chops there. Okay, I, I need, um, let's see, uh, you, sir, in the back. Yeah, would you run down here as fast as you can? Run. run. That's as fast as you can. There's a bear chasing you. Okay. What's, what's your... I'm already up here, man. I'm fine. We were talking about that. Yeah, we're going up to Glacier. We're talking about our strategies for who do we trip before the bear comes. Yeah. What's your name? Randy. Randy. Okay, Randy. Do me a favor. The Bible says that we're supposed to hide God's word in our... Okay, young man, come over here. You stand here. I want you to put that in his heart right now. Go. Well, just shove it in. Is that working? Wait, we can't... Hold on. Open. Can we go in that way? You can't just eat it? Oh, okay, hold on. Here, here. Okay, everyone say, we need... Different technology. Okay, you can have a seat. Go on back. You guys, everyone say faith. faith. Comes by hearing. I'm really glad that you're here right now. You're not glad you're here right now? I'm sorry. Well, I'm glad that you're here right now because I had two deaf parents. It really matters to me because everyone say faith. faith. Comes by hearing. These folks are hearing with their eyes. Amen? Yeah, thank you. One guy's over there, like, doing it right. Everyone do this for me. Awesome. Everyone say faith. faith. Comes by hearing. So we're singing the word. So you can hear the word and believe. 
Okay, now here's the deal. Neuroscientists, those are really smart people to study the brain. I'm not one. They tell you if you look at a book, you get about 10% of what you look at. You believe that? Okay, I, I was never a good reader. I didn't learn to read till I was 13 years old. Reading is a challenge, even now. Okay, some of you guys are like me, amen? But they say if you look, it's 10%, but if you see it and you hear it, it's 30%. Everyone say 30. 30 is more than 10, right? They say, though, if you see it, and you hear it, and you do something kinesthetic, that means something active, then you get 98%. Let, let's see if it works. If I said, do not merely to the, and so, do what it, you remembered that. That was like 20 minutes ago. Some of you guys don't have an eight-second attention span. They, they said, recently there was a study. Kids today have a seven-second attention span. Goldfish, 11 seconds. That's messed up. But you guys, because we're going to use a different technology, we're not going to shove that Bible in our chest or in our mouth or in our ears. We're going to sing it, and we're going to say it, and we're going to see it, and we're going to do it. DJ, are you ready to do Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Let's do it. Here we go, church. Reach up. Here we go. A trust, 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 trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. With all, 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 all of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. And all your ways submit to Him. What are you going to do? He, 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 he will make your pastor. We're running. Proverbs 3, 5, Here we go. I trust, 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 trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. With all, 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 all of your heart. With all, all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And all your ways submit to Him. What will He do? And He, 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 he will, will make you pass straight. We're running. Now shout it out. Whoa. Whoa, your turn, church. Whoa, a trust, 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 trust in the Lord. Trust, 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 All your ways submit to him. And he, 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 he will make your path straight. We're running! Here we go! Whoa, 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 in the Lord. Awesome. Give the Lord a hand clap and have a seat, church. Have a seat. How long do we have? All night, she says. I wish. Say what? 10, 15, okay. I'm going to change gears right now. Is that okay? Yeah. Family, you can have a seat. Give me, I'm going to drink something. We were in Georgia last week, because we, we live in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, God decided on the path to here, we should go to New Jersey first, <laughs> yeah, and then Maryland, and then South Carolina, and then Georgia, and then back to Tennessee, and then to Kansas, and up to here. Now, that didn't seem like a straight path at all, but it was exactly where he needed us to be when he needed us to be there. I need this man to come up. We talked earlier. Would you come on up here? Would you give this man a hand? <clears throat> There's a message that God's put on my heart all summer. And I've watched him do some amazing things when we've shared this verse with people. Um, I know that you are a church that's able to be honest. Many of you have nothing to lose. Amen? But everything to gain in God. 
So I'm going to ask you to be real honest with me. Where, where's this microphone? Is this microphone working here? Okay, we're going to do a little, uh, little interview style here. I want, you to, uh, I want you to do this with me. Everyone say, therefore, therefore since, we are since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Say, therefore, therefore since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. Could you put up Hebrews 12.1 on the screen, Brother Mike? Thank you. Now, sir, what is your name? Peter. Everyone say hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. Peter doesn't know this, but Peter's the fastest man in this church right now. He's going to show us. Peter, I want you to run all the way up to that man there across the back, and run down here to the front. Now, in order for him to be able to run as fast as possible, we need to give him some encouragement. Can you guys yell, run with me? Run, 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 Come on, make some noise for him. Woo! Come on, Peter. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. How you doing, Peter? Like, like, how was that? Are you all right? Yeah. Like, you could do that again? Yeah. Run, 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 run. Come on, you guys, make some noise for him. Give him a high five. Give him some encouragement. Woo! Come on. All right. How you doing? Good. Good. Like, like, you could do that again? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I'll give you a break, okay? You just stand right here. Everyone say, therefore, therefore. since we are surrounded yes. by such a great cloud of witnesses, I'm going to ask you this question. Some of you are more familiar with our judicial system than others. <laughs> who knows what a witness is? That's somebody who saw you do it. What? What did this man just do? He ran around the church. What did that man just do? He ran around the church. What did you see that man do? Run around the church. She says twice. What, what did, did you see this man do something? Yeah, he's breathing hard. He's breathing. <laughs> yeah. There's one in every crowd, and now there's at least two. Oh, my gosh. Right now, if this was a courtroom... We have three people that saw him run. You know for sure that that was him. Would you, would you identify that as him? Peter ran. Say, therefore, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let me tell you something. Did you know in the Bible, five Gospels? Say, Matthew, Matthew. Mark, Luke, John, and yours. There are people who are looking at your story. They're watching how you run. Everybody saw you run. They watched how you did it. They noted that you were breathing kind of heavy. Like me. That's good. I didn't even run, you guys. I'm <laughs> really, God, you want me to jump up and down? I'm a fat guy. Really, that's your plan. You guys, we all saw him do it. You have an audience. There's people that are looking at your life and reading it. And if your life points to God, then they'll look at that next book. Amen? Say, therefore, therefore. since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. Now, I need, I need someone, kids. One of you guys, raise your hand if you could tell me what it means to hinder. She says she knows. Nope, nobody. Oh, you over here. Guys, yeah, young lady, you got your hand up. Go. What does it mean to hinder? To block. Ooh, that's good. That's good. So, to hinder. Let me give you an example. Tomorrow, I understand I might go out on a boat. And boats have heavy things that you throw off. They got a chain on them. 
an anchor. And that anchor hinders that boat from floating away. It stops it. And I'll tell you, there's things that happen in our lives, sometimes we allow them, that will stop us. Amen? Okay. We're to throw off everything that what? And the sin that so easily entangles. Okay, don't get confused with untangled. Sin does not untangle. It doesn't simplify. It doesn't make it easy. Sin entangles. Let me show you. Okay, just a little visual. Everyone take out your hands like this. Put your thumbs to the ground. Okay, now cross your hands over like this. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. You got it? Yeah. All right, you got it. You got to grab. Grab, sister, grab. Now wiggle just your little finger and just your thumb. That's pretty good, Peter. That's pretty good. This, this one's moving, though, Peter. You got to just hold these still. Just your little finger and your thumb. Okay, you ready? Here, I'll do it with you. Okay, little finger, thumb. Say one, two, three, go. Woo! Did you, did you do it? Are you guys still tangled up? You're still tangled up. Okay, everyone say, therefore, therefore since, we are since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, except that sin that no one can see and you really like doing, and it's just kind of nice when no one's around to comfort yourself. You've been doing it a long time, so you're really good at it, so why give that up? Amen? It's not saying that there. Because it, it says, and let us run. Everyone say, let us run. <laughs> With perseverance. perseverance. Unless we get tired and just think of something better to do, and then we shouldn't run anymore. No. People, people in our society, I will tell you, me, I get tired of things. I got a gym membership last year. I went for a month. <laughs> it was an awesome month. I felt so good. Everyone say perseverance. perseverance. I did not display perseverance because after that month I stopped. It was hard. It was easier to be at home. Everyone say run. run. With perseverance. perseverance. The, race the race marked out for us. See, by reading this verse, it insinuates that God has a plan marked out already. He has a path. He knew that you might be here today. He marked out a plan for me to come here. He sent me to New Jersey to get here. That's confusing. He had a plan. Now, here's the deal. We're going to play a little game called Let's Hinder Him. Everyone say, Let's, Let's Hinder Him. Okay, I need a small child. Young lady, could you help me with something? Are you, are you shy? You shy? Okay. I need someone. To, you, sir. Seven. Come with me. Now, church, I want you to be honest with me. I already know, because Pass asked you earlier, what some things are that hinder you. How many people in here are angry? We have some anger issues. Anger is a sin, and it hinders us. Amen? Okay, so seven. Everyone say hi, seven. Come here. Seven, here's what you're going to do. Sir, we can take one step forward. Perfect, perfect. Now here's the deal. Do you have to go to the bathroom? Right now? Yeah, okay, hold it. <laughs> now here's the deal. Sit on his foot and wrap your legs around his leg. Sit down. Yeah, good. Sit down. Sit all the way down. Sit all the way down. Now gra wrap your legs around and grab him. Grab him. Hold on tight. Can you shake him off? Okay, good. No, that's perfect. <laughs> now everyone say anger. anger. is entangling him. I need someone else who wants to ride his leg. Someone little this time. You, sir, can I borrow you? Come on. Come on. Now, church, can I ask one of you to raise your hand and tell me something that hinders you? What's a sin that hinders you? We're some honest people. You, sir, raise your hand. Go ahead. What is it? Distrust. distrust. All right. Sir, you're going to represent distrust. Can you do it? Okay, do you, do you trust me? We'll see. Okay, come. And I want you to sit down on that other leg right there. Wrap your legs around just like your friend did. Yeah, there's nothing natural about it. No, you've got to put your legs forward. Put your legs all the way around him. 
and sit your bottom on his foot. There we go. There you go. Yeah, that's just weird. That's just weird. How you doing, man? Yeah, good. Yeah, it's, it's another day at the office, huh? Welcome to Children's Ministry. This is fun, you guys. Okay, everyone say, let's, let's hinder him. Hinder. Now, right now, he has problems with trust, and he has problems with anger. But he's not hindered completely. Would you please just walk over to me? Okay, you can stop right there. Now, Peter, let me ask you a question. A minute ago, you ran around here twice. That, you need to hold on to him. You hold on tight. Don't worry about your shoe. We'll get it again later. Hold on to him. There you go. He didn't trust that he'd get his sandal back. Okay, mistrust. Peter, was it easy to walk with him on there? No. But, but you can still walk, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, like, if you, need, if you needed to right now, go back there to get $100. You would go back there. Yeah. Yeah. Now hold on tight, you guys. So he's not totally hindered. Because a lot of times when we have some sin in our life, if it's just a couple things, it's like, not, not a big deal. We can keep moving, right? Like, it's not slowing me down that bad. So I, I don't need to do anything about it. Everyone say, let's, let's hinder, him. hinder him. What's another thing? I need some people to be honest with me right now that hinders us. What's a, th- a sin we deal with? Go ahead. Say it loud. Addiction. Addiction. Ooh. Who's going to represent addiction for me? You know, why don't you come up? Come on up. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to grab his arm. Could you face the crowd one more time? Face him. That's good. I need you to grab his arm right there. Hold him. What's another thing that grabs hold of us? Sir, you in the back. Lying. You telling the truth right now? <laughs> Come on down. Come on down, sir. I need you to grab his other arm. We're going to bind him up. Everyone say, Therefore. Therefore. Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that just means a lot of them. Let us throw off everything that hinders. Can you see the sins that are hindering this man? You know, a lot of times other people can see our problems all over us, even before we admit that we've got them, amen? We think we can just carry on. Guys, I need you to hold him back. But Peter, I want you to try to come towards me. Kids, hold on. Hold on tight. Okay. Run! Run! Come on, church. Run! 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 Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty strong. She said, he's enormous. I knew this was going to be a challenge. But God's up to a challenge tonight. Amen? Amen. Even a man as strong as him or as strong-willed as some of us, can be stopped if you don't take care of your business. Amen? Okay. What's another thing that hinders us? Yes, you. What is it? Greed. Greed. Come up here, greedy. Come up here. This is awesome. A little hand in the middle of his chest. Okay, what's another one, kids? Who's got one? Go ahead, young lady in the yellow. Yes, you. Go ahead, say it loud. Um. Well, I... <laughs> okay, we'll come back to you. What's another one, young young lady? Let's see. We've called on you, you sir. What do you got? Cheating. Oh. Come on, cheater. <laughs> Is he the only cheater in this room? No. I've cheated. I've ch- yes. He's like, I'm good at it. No. Put your hand in the middle of his chest. We need one more. We need one more. Oh, he's like all excited. <laughs> this takes a lot of nerve to put a microphone in kids' mouths and see what they're going to say. Go ahead and just tell us. Stealing. Stealing. Come on. Come on. I'm proud of you. Put your hand in his chest. You guys, he said Stealing. Does your mom know about this? Okay. She does now. Who in this room has been forgiven? All of us, right? All of us. So I want you to do me a favor right now. I want you to look at the person next to you and say, I forgive you. No matter what you say, 
This is a safe place. I want to see you set free. A lot of people are afraid, especially leaders. I, I heard a, a quote one time from a pastor. He said, pastors spend their whole lives building a hospital they can never be a patient in. Think about that. So many pastors, if they start to stumble or they get caught up, they can't come to the altar like y'all can. How would you feel if your senior pastors came down? I've stolen from the church. I've done this and I've done that. Man, y'all would freak out. He'd be out of a job. His family would be out on the street. But there's grace for you at the altar. There is grace for him too. Praise the Lord. Tonight is a night where there's grace for everybody. It was that way yesterday too, by the way. And tomorrow. But I don't want you to wait till tomorrow. My favorite Bible verse right now. You guys doing good? You holding on to him? Don't let him get away. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and will make fun of us and mock us till the end of time. Who am I talking about? Could it be Satan? Satan will mock you. He will he is the best historian on the planet. Man, he'll just bring it up over, you know. You know, I bet you came to church, yeah, but you're still that liar. You're still that thief. You're still greedy. You're still angry, aren't you? I saw you yesterday. Man, he'll mock you all day long. But God says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. And purify us from all unrighteousness. You better get back on that foot, boy. You better get back on that foot. He has not cast you off yet. <laughs> Soon enough. Soon enough. Now, we don't have a lot of time, so we're just going to do this all in one big bush. Okay, now, but I'm going to tell you, when you come to these great classes that are offered here, when you come to the counseling that's offered here, you may not be able to throw everything off in one fell swoop. Amen? It's a process. It took you time to get bound up, and it'll take you time to get unwound. Amen? But you've got to start. If we confess our what? Sin. If we confess our Sin. Here's what we're going to do. Church, right now, I'm going to ask you to do this yourselves. Okay? Don't worry about anyone hears. I want you to all be honest right now. Can we do it? Say, Dear Lord, Dear Lord forgive me. Forgive me. Peter, say, Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me for my anger. Forgive me for my anger. Come on, church, help him out. Say, forgive me for my anger. Forgive me for my anger. Forgive me for lying. Forgive me for lying. Forgive me for cheating. Forgive me for cheating. For being greedy. For being greedy. For not trusting. For not trusting. Lord, forgive my sins. Lord, forgive my sins. Take them from me. Take them from me. Let me cast them off now. Let me cast them off. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sins, run back to your seats. Go! 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 <clears throat> wow. If it was only that easy. But I'll... Thank you. Now here's the scary though. Sometimes we'll throw off one or two. The ones everyone just saw. And we'll hold on to a couple. Everyone say pretty much. Can you pretty much repent? Can you pretty much die? Like you're dead or you're alive, right? Like you're dead? Help me out. You're dead or you're alive. Yeah, pretty much be alive. Sometimes it feels like it. But when you, for, when you ask for forgiveness, I want you to do all of it. Amen? God doesn't want to pretty much forgive you. He wants to give you, forgive all of you. He wants to cleanse all of your unrighteousness. Amen? Peter, have you become unhindered? So you know what it's time for, right? Run! 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 Go! Run! 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 Run!
Give this man a hand. Good, have a seat. Yeah. So church, here's what I want to do right now. We've been honest with each other, just a few of us here and there. I want to ask you right now to dig a little deeper. I know we're just about out of time, so I want to be respectful of that. But I want everyone to close their eyes real quick. If there's people in this room that have done things that they need to be forgiven of, saved or unsaved, God is here to forgive you all. Amen? His grace doesn't run out. He didn't forgive you yesterday and today no more. There's no three strikes and He's done with you. God will never leave you or forsake you. He'll never give up on you. Don't worry what people have done. Your Lord isn't like them. He loves you. He designed you to be in fellowship with Him forever in heaven. And He wants you to be in fellowship with Him now. Awesome. Church, open your eyes for a moment. I want to tell you about my God. When He forgave me, He poured out grace on me. He poured His love out for me and He shed His blood for me and He covered me in it so that my sins would be forgiven. Because when I come before my God, my God has a record of everything I've done. Does anybody in here have a record? All of us do. I'm not talking about criminal record. I'm talking about God knows what you did. Do you hear that, kids? God knows what you did. And when you ask Him to forgive you, you may actually sin again. Am I talking to the right people? The thing is, when you sin, and you go back to Him and say, Lord, I know I asked her for to forgive me from before, but I got really angry today. I stopped trusting. Will you forgive me? He'll do it again. You know, here's the thing. Sometimes we fall back in to the ways that we were a minute ago before we repented. We might hook up with the wrong people again. We stumble. But when you come back to the Lord and you repent, say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Will you please forgive me again? Do you know what He'll do? His love never runs out. His grace never runs out. He has enough blood to cover every sin that you could possibly commit. No one's excited about that. I said He has enough blood to cover every sin that you could possibly commit. It's His will that none should perish, that we should all be with Him. But He can't have imperfect people around Him. He can't have sinners like us. So we need to accept what Jesus did on the cross and be covered by His blood and let it pour out. It'll never run dry. Here's the story. I want you to close your eyes now. If you need to be forgiven, I'm going to give you a chance. Say, Dear Lord, please forgive me. I want you to all at the same time shout out something you need to be forgiven for. One, two, three, go. Let's do it again. I bet you got more. One, two, three, shout it. I got good news. His grace isn't over yet. Let's do it again. One, two, three, shout. Jesus took that cross and he took that pain and he took that shame that you deserved so you wouldn't have to. And all he asks is that we put our faith in him and believe. He says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be what? All of you. No matter what you've done, he's a God who saves Church, close your eyes right now. If you're someone who today, maybe for the first time, is being asked for forgiveness, or asking for forgiveness, and you want to trust God as your Savior, I just want to see you slide your hand up right now. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. 
Father, I thank you, Lord, for these people here. Church, I want you to pray with me. Say, Dear Lord, I declare with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead so that I can call myself saved. Thank you, Lord. Be my God. I put you in charge now. I need you. I can't do it by myself. Help me to read your word and do what it says. Help me to believe it, to stand on it, and to tell others. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, there's some people who raise their hands. Can we make some noise for those people? Now, I'm going to go quick. Close your eyes one more time. If there's someone that you need to forgive, God asked me to ask you to do that right now. There's some unforgiveness in this room, some unfinished business. And God wants to set you free. It could be something from 50 years ago or something from yesterday. You were forgiven. It cost you nothing to be forgiven. But Jesus' blood, and it wasn't spilled in vain. He wants you to be free. So right now, church, I want you to think right now. Say, dear Lord, help me to let go. Help me to trust you. Heal my heart. Help me love with the love you have. You love sinners. Help me to do the same. Now, before you open your eyes, I'm going to ask you, every one of you guys to do me one giant favor. The only reason I'm standing before you is because a man named Danny came to me every day for a year and a half and told me Jesus loved me. He was relentless. It was like having lunch at school with a telemarketer. You know what I'm talking about. Every day. Hey, Jeff, Jesus loves you. Hey, Jeff, Jesus loves you. Man, Christians were the meanest people in the world to me when I was a little kid. They all knew I couldn't read and they made fun of me. They told me I was worthless and stupid and awful, but Danny, he was different. He heard that God loved me, and he needed me to know it because he didn't want to see me go to hell. Raise your hand if, if you want to go to heaven. And keep it up if you want to go there by yourself. Not a trick question. The only reason I'm standing here is because Danny came to me, and he told me every day that Jesus loved me. Even when I punched him in the face, when I ran away from him, I did awful things to that dude. Because I needed to see if he was real. It wasn't right. But he never gave up on me. He wasn't a great evangelist. He was actually really scared. But he never quit. Because he needed to know that I was going to go to heaven. So right now, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think of one person that needs to go to heaven that you know that I haven't spoken to tonight. Can you come up with that person? Church, can you think of their name? On the count of three, I want you to shout their name. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord. Say, dear Lord, help me to learn your word, to believe your word, and to share it. My friend doesn't deserve hell. When grace can be had, Help me not leave them as they are, but tell them of your grace, of your love, of the forgiveness that I received. Because there's enough for everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, some people are evangelists, and they come and they count the number of people that got saved in their ministry. That's not my calling. God told me to influence influencers. Every one of you is an influencer in this room. You cannot, pastor said it, and he about started to preach my sermon, you can't have influence without relationship. When you shut people out, 
They can't hear what you've got to say. They can't see. They're not a witness to your life anymore. Say, therefore, since you're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let them see how you walk. Go find them. Go tell them Jesus loves them. Walk with them. Even when they don't deserve it and they drive you nuts, don't give up. Please. There's someone that you know that might be contemplating suicide right now. Three times in the last week in our ministry, we've been close to someone who just got a phone call that someone killed themselves. God told me to tell you that someone you know might feel so far away that they're just going to end it. And you guys could be the one that reach out and show them God's love. Will you take the challenge? Will you be the hands and feet of Christ? This church is not this building. Everyone look at your neighbor and say, you are the church. Say, we are the church. We're going to leave here real soon. We're going to go, where are we going? South Dakota? Minnesota? Wisconsin? Back to Tennessee for a minute. And then I'm going to go home to California and I'm going to say goodbye to my mom. She needs to accept Jesus. We all know somebody. When I accepted Jesus, she kicked me out. She put my stuff on the lawn and turned on the sprinklers. She just couldn't deal with stepping into the light and letting what she's done be seen. It's hard, amen? Walk with your friends. Love them. Let them know that God only has love for them. Amen? They need to hear it over and over and over. Don't give up. The time is short. Guys, I love you. I so thank you for letting us come and share with you tonight. Um, I know this isn't church as usual. If you're a visitor, it's not ever going to be like this ever again, probably. So come back another week and try it, and it's going to be great. Um, <laughs> I know they didn't tell you I was coming, so you still showed up, which is awesome. But um, would just pray with me one more time. Say, dear Lord, thank you for using me to do your will. You say to go and make disciples to teach people what your word says. Help me to go. Help Jeff to go. Thank you for providing for this ministry. Thank you for forgiving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Right, so before we get out of here, we are going to take up an offering for the family. Okay? Now, there was only one problem Go. with your thing tonight. What's that? This whole crew has ADD. Me too. So every time you did this, they didn't hear a word you said. They were too busy trying you know, to figure right? out where the word was. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody with me? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, <laughs> I have good news, though. God's grace still hasn't run out. There you go. Come on. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to pass the chicken buckets around for these guys. Um, throw in whatever you want to throw in. It's good to see you, brother. Glad you made her tonight. And uh, these guys, I got gotcha. you. And these guys are awesome. Amen. Can you give Jeff and his crew one more hand here? So let's just pray over this offering. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for Jeff and the ministry that you've called this whole family to. No, it's not him, Lord. Father, I pray for safety and divine guidance in everywhere he goes. I love the story he just told me about the trucker, Father God. I know that you set him up to meet that guy. So, Father, just watch over and protect him. Lead him and guide him, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I just wanted to remind you, if you didn't see, there's a ton. They have a table back here full of these cool shirts and all different kinds of things. I just want to encourage you to take a look. God told him when he got, when he walked in the building to slash the prices in half. So if you go back there, and he doesn't do that everywhere. He doesn't do that anywhere. And God told him to do it here.
And if you notice the shirts, it's not just advertising for him. We got the fruits of the Spirit. Look at the stuff they have. They have bracelets back there for two bucks that say, pray for, for Jumpstart 3. Things to remind you to keep praying for these guys because do you want to go out and travel and do what they do and never get home? Because they're the ones that do what we can't do. Right? So aren't we supposed to help support that? Yes, that's, that's part of our job, isn't it? That's how we get to go out and help minister to the world. I would love to go to Africa, but I'm not going anytime soon because I got too many babies here. But he can go. So I can bless him so he can go. This week we saw over 160 kids between the three different events. Numbers don't matter, but those are 160 kids and families that got love done by Jesus. And I would love to make this an annual thing that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So please keep Jeff and his family in prayer and buy something.